Now, a lot of y'all have probably heard of the McGinty. It's just an old winged wet fly, kind of looks like a bumblebee. But I'll bet not many of you have heard of the McGinty tied as a bucktail. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Matt. Thanks for stopping by. So I figured it was time to do another pattern from John Chewy's classic steelhead flies. I was flipping through this earlier today. Came across one called the McGinty Bucktail. Now there's not a whole lot of history on this. We do know the original McGinty, uh, the fly that looks like a bumblebee. It's been around since probably the turn of the century. It was pretty popular in the, the teens and the 20s. But it was also one of the early flies that made its way out west in the Pacific Northwest as a steelhead pattern. Seems a lot of the steelheaders just tied a bucktail onto all kinds of things. You had the royal coachman and various stoneflies. They just put a, a big hair wing on it and called it a steelhead fly. So that's what they did with this one. Just tie a McGinty in a bigger size and put a big old squirrel tail wing on it. And we don't really know who did this or who was kind of credited with creating it, but it was pretty popular throughout the 20s and 30s. And like the original McGinty, it's kind of fallen out of favor. And I mean, you won't go into many fly shops today and find a, a bin of them, but it's still in plenty of books. So I'm sure a few of you out there have tied it. Maybe some of you still fish it, but it is a pretty cool looking pattern. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's my hook. That's a number six salmon fly hook. So we're gonna tie this as a steelhead fly. And I'm gonna put a base down of black 70 denier thread. I should have probably gone up to 140, but this will work. Might need to catch that hook in there just a little bit more so it doesn't pull down on me. Okay, that'll work. Now for the tail, just some hackle fibers, red. A good clump of them. I'm gonna grab about 15 or so. And it doesn't appear to be too long. I think that'll work right there. Let's go ahead and catch this in. Okay, I think that's gonna work. Now either bury that or go ahead and snip it. I'm just gonna snip it because we've got a big thick chenille body. We don't have to worry about any lumps. And the first color we're gonna catch in is yellow. So just a medium chenille on this size hook. You can, you know, strip some of it off and get down to your thread core if you want. It's probably not that big a deal in, in this particular fly. But we're gonna do, envision the body of the fly. Um, a third of it is gonna be yellow, then the middle third will be black, and then the front third yellow again. Kinda of like the old classic McGinty wet fly, old winged wet fly. So I think three wraps right there. Should I go one more? Nah, don't wanna get greedy. Let's catch this off right here. Couple of wraps and then snip this, keep this piece out. We're gonna use it in just a second. So a couple extra wraps right there. Now, same thing with the black piece. And I'm gonna do the same thing, just strip a little bit off the end and catch in by the thread. Okay. I'm gonna go to about where my thread is. I think that'll be fine right there. Okay, I think that was also three wraps. Now one more piece, one more length of yellow. Okay, I think that's gonna work right there. Let's catch that one off. Now just a couple more components. We've got a brown saddle hackle, tied pretty sparse, but actually pretty long. So this is gonna be, we're gonna wrap this as a collar and then kind of sweep it back before we put our wing on. So I'll just create a little tie-in point like this right here. 
and this is pretty cheap stuff. It might take me five or six wraps to even get a sparse hackle. So I'm gonna fold that back over and really lock it in. Now I'll snip this tip off. All right, now let's just try to preen this back. And if it's sticking out perpendicular, don't worry. We can, you know, take a few wraps back to really, to push it back. I think that was four, and that's we're gonna make that be enough. So let's go ahead and catch this off with a couple of tight wraps. And before we get into the wing, let's just push all these back and put a few wraps going back. And I'm kind of using, putting a few extra wraps down right here to create a base where I can have a, a semi-flat spot to put my wing. And the wing is just gray squirrel tail. I do want, before I take it out of my stacker, let's wax this, because squirrel tail is pretty slippery. But I got this stack, and let's see how well it did. Okay, I think that's gonna be pretty, pretty uh, even on the tips. I'm just gonna catch it in about like that. That might be a little bit more than I want. So I'm gonna grab the tips and then just try to thin a little bit of it out. Okay, I think that's gonna work right there. Get your length, probably to the bend of the hook, not so far back as the, the red tail. My thread's hanging at the back of my head. That's gonna be my where I catch the first wrap in. And now you could do what we do sometimes with bucktail and put one wrap just around the, yeah, let's do that. Let's put one wrap just around the squirrel and now around the, the squirrel tail and the hook. And that, if you do that right, it will keep it from spinning around on you. I think we're going to be okay right there. So I'm just going to take a medium wrap. Now I can put some tighter wraps as I go forward. Now do I have enough wraps on there that I can snip this? Maybe one more tight wrap forward. Okay, let's get in here and cut this away. And I'm going to do it just a few snips at a time. Or maybe a two, I guess. If you try to cut it all at once, you might end up, you know, spinning it around your hook. Okay, we got a little bit of a messy head right there, but we're going to fix that right now. I need to take a few wraps back. Not too tight. Okay. Now I can take it right back up here behind the eye and build my big old streamer bucktail head. And that's big enough head. I didn't cover everything, but I don't need to make it any bigger. So let's go ahead and whip finish this. And before we're done, let's critique this one. All right, that head's a little bit clunky, a little bit big. And um, yeah, I think the length of that wing is okay. It might look a little bit better if it was laying a little flatter, but the only way to do that would have been to build a bigger base underneath it. Uh, but I think this is a fine drop of head cement and this guy's a fishable fly. So that's it, everybody. The McGinty Bucktail, pretty cool looking pattern. And I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.